तो अब हम शुरू करने जा रहे हैं इनर्ट गैस प्लांट ठीक है इनर्ट गैस प्लांट में ये देखो ये शिप है ये क्रूड ऑयल टैंकर है ये क्रूड ऑयल टैंकर के पीछे ये सब टैंक्स हैं बड़े बड़े टैंक्स ऑल बिग टैंक्स इन द क्रूड ऑयल टैंकर एंड देन यू हैव दिस इनर्ट गैस प्लांट इन द इंजन रूम giving the supply to of inert gas to the cargo tanks and uh, we have already seen why we need inert gas in the tank to avoid uh, fire to break the oxygen part of the fire triangle and in flammability diagram if you understand that you will know clearly when and how much of inert gas is required so you can see in engine room we have this parts of inert gas the gas is coming from boiler and then going to scrubber and then fans are pushing the air this is called blower fans and then we need to put inert gas in the tank and then air so this is a crude oil tanker and we know that uh, there are very big tanks on the crude oil tanker is one so big tanks are there and this is in, in the engine room behind we have the inert gas system so you have the boiler from which the inert gas is coming inert gas is going to the a flue gas is going to the scrubber so first you should know the parts of the inert gas system the first part is the boiler and the flue gas is coming second part is the scrubber for cleaning the inert gas the next main part is the blower the fans to push the gas to the tank then is the deck seal which is a non return device to avoid the gas flow back to the system and to avoid fire in the boiler and then from after the deck seal there is a non return wall and from uh, inert gas isolating wall the gas will go into the tank and this is the pv wall or uh, this is uh, same like same working like a pressure uh, releasing wall we will see what it is and with this the pressure is released so let's see so it is simplified in one line pv breaker this is the pv breaker so <coughs> let's see uh, in detail so for showing in detail all these parts are connected in one line as we saw they are not in one line but to simplify we will keep it in one line so this from after the boiler the inert gas plant starts so inert gas is coming out from the boiler and then it will go to the uh, scrubber unit then inert gas fans or blowers then deck water seal unit cargo tanks and pv breaker so let's see first the inert gas is coming to the scrubber and it is being washed and cleaned then to the blowers so blower fans are there then deck seal unit so deck seal unit is nothing the gas is passing under the water and then going to the tank this tank is full of crude oil and you can see it's full of uh, inert gas also and then it is uh, going on the other part other side if required it will go if pressure increases it will increase from the pv breaker so you can see this is scrubber fans deck seal and cargo tank and pv breaker these are the main parts of your inert gas plants which you have to write in your exam when you are writing then let's start uh, understanding each part one by one so first is the scrubber unit what is the uh, main use of scrubber unit to clean the gas inert gas because it is uh, burning fuel air ratio in the tank 
so there will be a lot of impurities like carbon sulfur and some other dust particles all those things so this is the scrubber where you have the inlet of the inert gas and then we have the inlet of the water because the gas is sprinkled and cooled and also the gas is hot so it is cooled down also in the scrubber so scrubber has two main function one is cooling down one is cleaning what are the gases it is cleaning it is cleaning the sulfur carbon and dust particles all impurities so this is the sprinklers for the scrubber for putting the water and cooling down the gas all the parts you can see inside the scrubber then this side we have a water connection and this side we have a water drain also non written device ka jo sir wo pipe hai wo kidhar connect hota hai idhar jo boiler up tank wala ab usse aata hai jo no no we will see that first let me complete the video because this recording is going on after the end of the video i will ask all the questions just write down the questions so this is the baffle plate what is this baffle plate this is a kind of baffle stone or baffle rock or something and it is very good in absorbing the sulfur impurities so almost 90% of the sulfur from the inert gas is uh, absorbed from this baffle plate so this baffle plate Uh, the gas will come and pass through the baffle plate it will also cool down and absorb the sulfur and all and the carbon and other impurities will be absorbed by the water and then the, there is a demister pad because gas is now full of moisture it's like a sponge to absorb the moisture from the gas so first we have the water inlet because always the water is filled and gas is passing through the water because it's hot gas and we want it to cool down so gas is lighter so it will come up the come up from the water and uh, all the extra water will be drained down so this part of the scrubber will always be filled with water now the gas is entering you can see passing through the water and passing through the baffle stones and getting sprinkled all impurities are coming out impurities will be collected here and the gas is passing out of the scrubber through demister pad all the moisture is absorbed here so also outside there will be a side glass to check that there is not lot of impurities or no fire no sludge and all those things so next unit after uh, which is the next unit after the scrubber inert gas fans or blowers blowers so this is what you can see the blowers they are uh, running with this electric motor like you have the fan in your home and there is a fan connected but this is of a very big size and it is enclosed in this casing because otherwise the gas will escape to atmosphere so it has to be gas tight and uh, the capacity of the blowers is 1.25 times the largest cargo tank so generally there are two blowers one of which you can see the impellers are inside this is closed impeller and with the fan it will speed up and give pressure to <coughs> the inert, inert gas because 203 meters long ships and the tank sometimes already have some pressure so we have to put inert gas in the tank with pressure then after the fan the gas will go to the deck seal these are all the minimum parts after this we will see the parts in detail so basic parts next is deck seal this is how a deck seal looks like from outside it looks like same like your scrubber but it is not a scrubber just a normal tank basically deck seal means to avoid seal means it is not uh, allowing the gas to flow back so they have this system where the gas you have this tank and you have a pipe and from bottom it is open 
so this tank is full of water these are the parts of deck seal there is a pipe this is a tank and there is this demister pad to absorb the moisture so now you see this uh, tank is full of uh, water up to this level marked and extra water will again you have a drain tank same like your scrubber you have inlet and outlet and 24 hours this water supply is there whenever we want now gas is entering from this pipe and because it is light it will be bubbled through and passing through the demister pad because gas is getting wet so again the moisture will be absorbed and gas will go to the cargo tank so what is the next part after this this is gas is going to the cargo tank now suppose there is too much pressure in the cargo tank and the boiler is uh, side gas is coming of less pressure so because there is back pressure gas is of low pressure this gas will come here and it will push the water maybe if it is not enough pressure it cannot push the water because pressure required is 2500 millimeter water here but if it is enough pressure it can go back but it will not go back because there is lot of water and gas cannot push the water. So that is how the seal is working. Now this gas is filled in the cargo tank. And then if there is excess pressure, it will go and be released from the PV breaker. So let's see what is PV breaker. PV breaker is in the common inert gas line as you can see. PV valve is for each tank and PV breaker is in the common line. If the pressure is not released from PV valve, then it will be released from PV breaker. So the setting is a little bit higher. So this is the PV breaker. You can see it's like a mushroom vent and same there is a tank inside, same like other uh, deck seal, you have a pipe and on top it is open. And same like deck seal, it will be filled with water. So you have water inlet, but here the water will be more, uh, 2500 mm of water gauge or 1800 depending on the ship's design. As per that, uh, so the gas, inert gas is coming from this pipeline and pushing the water, but because uh, the pressure is less, it cannot push the water the gas will be keep passing through other tanks but suppose the pressure is too much then it will push the water totally out of the pv breaker and then the gas will come out so we can come to know that if the water is coming out of pv breaker that means pressure is very high and we can check the pressure from the ccr sensors and all also Now, if there is a vacuum in the tank, suppose there is very uh, low pressure in the tank because of some reason. So the air will come from the outside and then it will uh, pass through the water and it will go into the tank and the tank will not get ruptured. So this is your inert gas system. Anybody has any doubt till now? So bomb boiler, the gas is going to the scrubber, then blow your fans, then deck seal, then cargo tank, and then PV breaker on the deck, and then to each tank. So, so first there will be a valve from the boiler to allow the air to come to the scrubber. Then from scrubber, uh, there will be a oxygen sensor. If uh, the air is uh, less than 8%, it will allow to go to the fans. If it's more than 8%, it will go and vent to the atmosphere. But nowadays, they don't allow in atmosphere. So this pipe will be connected to the exhaust system of the funnel. On deck, they will not allow. Then from the fans, again, it will go to the tank. But before that, there will be some sensors 
to check the temperature of the fan is not there is no problem uh, fans are working okay pressure is okay then it will go to the deck seal deck seal you can see the water connection and then to the main cargo tank before that again there is a non return valve and there is a inert gas isolating valve and all those we can control so there are so many uh, backups to avoid the backflow of inert gas into the tank <coughs> so this is a typical no if the time when we are using the inert gas that time boiler will be used all the time but uh, we are not using inert gas 24 hours no at the time when we are using inert gas all the time that time we will use the boiler but if we are not using the inert gas then not necessary boiler will be stop all day same 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 boiler inert gas this uh, there is a inert gas plant or inert gas system when you are studying inert gas plant or inert gas system it is using the same boiler which is used uh, which is there in the engine because ship is designed like that but there are after this we will study there are some inert gas uh, separate plant or inert gas generator disco bolte so inert gas generator is there separate generator there is nitrogen generator in that they are not taking the gas from the boiler there is separate burning no need of boiler so that we will see after this oxygen sir analyzer ke bare mein bata do sir one minute see the gas is coming from the boiler it is boiler uptake valve and then again you can see it is passing through the scrubber then uh, it will get purified from braffel stones and my sprinkler then demister pad and going from fan now you can see it is written oxygen so all these are valves green and red walls safety walls ceiling wall you can see there is a oxygen written here that means there is a oxygen analyzer here and it will be checked from the gas that uh, if it is less than 8% or not if it is uh, less than 8% it will can go to the deck seal if not then it will go to 8% okay 5% less than 5% sir Ah, sorry, less than five percent from the inert gas plant, and uh, for the tank, it should be less than eight percent. But uh, nowadays, generally, some companies have more stricter. Some companies have two uh, percent or three percent requirements. And nowadays, inert gas plants or generators are quite good. You can get even uh, one or two percent oxygen easily. Any other question about oxygen analyzer? डायग्राम ड्रॉ करने के लिए आता सर इसका जी यस सो यू कैन ड्रॉ दिस डायग्राम आल्सो और यू कैन जस्ट ड्रॉ लाइक वन यू कैन ड्रॉ अ ब्लॉक डायग्राम जस्ट ड्रॉ वन बॉक्स एंड पुट नेम इट एज बॉयलर देन वन लाइन पुट अपटेक एंड यू कैन ड्रॉ वन मोर बॉक्स व्हिच इज कॉल्ड स्क्रबर यू कैन पुट सम स्प्रिंकलर एंड दिस पैड देन यू कैन ड्रॉ अ फैन और यू कैन जस्ट ड्रॉ अ ब्लॉक आल्सो यू कैन राइट फैन बट बेटर टू ड्रॉ लाइक दिस then you can put oxygen then you can draw one more block for deck seal like this and then a cargo tank and pv breaker okay so oxygen is more so gas is returning back to the scrubber yes uh, there is also a recirculation line if oxygen is more they are recirculating to the gas now oxygen is less than 5% so it is going to the deck seal and then to the tank okay then we will see the inert gas generator so 
So this is on the ship where you can see uh, they are doing the inerting of the tank. So this is the deck seal on the tank, on the deck. You can see such a big deck seal is there and there is an inspection manual. He was seeing that water level is okay and there is no sludge or something in the tank. So this is the CCR ship cargo control room and you have this uh, all the inert gas uh, monitoring system. You have the pressure, oxygen analyzer, temperature, and then recording all the paper is recording all the readings. So everything you have to check. See the pressure is controlling how much pressure we want. As per that, the fans will be running, setting the pressure. And the paper is uh, noting now everything, oxygen content below 5%. Okay, then these are all the regulations is given in MARPOL that when we have to do discharging and there will be your inert gas, what you call plan also. So same thing is showing is there is, we want to avoid explosion in the tank. So this is the cargo tank. So uh, you can see how is the construction of the cargo tank. Outside you have this ballast tank and inside this uh, cargo tank you have this uh, this thing. So this is a flammability diagram he's explaining that in the tank uh, hydrocarbon percentage is very big because it was full of cargo. So this cargo is discharged and the hydrocarbon percentage will be too much and oxygen percentage is here. So this is a flammable mixture. If suppose the hydrocarbon percentage and oxygen percentage is in this range, this is called a flammable mixture. And if uh, other places it is non-flammable so that's why it is shown with green and flammable mixture is shown with the red so hydrocarbon range from around 1% of hydrocarbon to 11% of hydrocarbon in the tank and oxygen from 11 to 20% is a dangerous flammable atmosphere so if oxygen is less than 11% it's not dangerous or non-flammable and if uh, hydrocarbon is more than 11%, it's not flammable. So if it is more than 11%, it's called too rich environment. And if it is less than 11%, it's called too lean environment. Less than 1% is too lean environment. So this is your upper explosive limit, 11%. And 1% is your lower explosive limit for hydrocarbon. So lower upper between upper and lower explosive limit is the flammable range or flammable mixture. So now if we put, uh, suppose you have the hydrocarbon content in the tank somewhere here, that is 14%. If we start putting the and inert gas is around 5% for new ships and 8% for old ships in the tank. So if we put uh, inert gas uh, air in the tank directly, then oxygen will keep increasing and we will pass from this line and we will enter the flammable mixture. So we don't want to enter the flammable mixture. That's why we will put inert gas, oxygen, will uh, not increase, but hydrocarbon will reduce. So in, with inert gas, you can see hydrocarbon will reduce, but oxygen is not increasing. Oxygen will be less than 5%. Then once we reach below 1% of LEL, then we will start putting air if we want man entry. 
So this tank, we want there is we want to do some repair or dry dock or something. We need twenty one percent oxygen, but this tank is full of hydrocarbon. If we put air directly, you can see oxygen is increasing, and we will enter in the flammable zone. So first, we will fill this tank with inert gas, reducing the hydrocarbon less than one percent. And then when we put air, because there is no hydrocarbon, there is no chance of uh, flammable mixture, and we will uh, get the tank ready for man entry. It is called dilution with air. So putting inert gas is called inerting, and uh, up to less than one percent or even more, we sometimes continue after that also. And then from inert gas, putting air is called dilution with air or ventilation or gas freeing. Then there is one point which is called critical dilution with air. That is, if you have three to four percent of hydrocarbon and you just do dilution with air, it can touch the flammable mixture line, and that is called critical dilution. So we don't do that, and we do safe dilution with air, less than one percent of LEM. Any doubt in flammability diagram? So this is called flammability diagram. So new ships, uh, you have to have five percent less than oxygen in the tank, and old ships requirement was eight percent. So in the tank, the gas uh, inert gas pressure must always be positive. So these are the pipelines on the deck for the inert gas and all the tanks. so same thing from the boiler the gas is coming but now we will see uh, what are the alarms or uh, sensors in the inert gas system so you, the gas can come from inert gas generator or boiler or whatever depending on how much percentage of oxygen and cargo we need in the ship so the gas will come from the Boiler or inert gas generator. Then, what is the next part? Scrubber. So, in scrubber, the function we have seen that it is cleaning. But what will be the alarms and sensors in the scrubber? So, because uh, there is water level, so we need to see. You can see this scrubber is cleaning the sulfur and carbon. So, because there is uh, water, so we have to see the water level. the water level is uh, up complete or not so high water level alarm and low water level sensor alarm is there and supply of water electrical supply is there or not that sensor will already also be there so automatic pressure sensor regulating valve for the this thing and then there is a pressure sensor for the inert gas also so first in the scrubber you have water level so low level and high level water alarm in the scrubber and water supply unit electrical supply sensor then pressure sensor for the gas and oxygen analyzer for the gas so after the scrubber you will have sometimes you have after scrubber or after the blower fan depending on the line here you have after the scrubber you have the oxygen sensor and the pressure sensor and low and high water level alarms so once you explain in the question what are the parts then you will have to uh, give the list of sensor and alarm then uh, there's i i told you like you have the temperature sensor for the uh, blower fans so blower fans because they are electric motors they are running for long time they will also get heated up so if there is too much temperature they will shut automatically and they will show that blowers fans are heated up and if there is a power supply failure to the blower fans that also so this person is coming to check this is a scrubber and this person is come to check the temperature of the scrubber it should not be very high because uh, it's supposed to cool the inert gas but inert gas is very hot coming from the boiler so we have to check so when you are writing the working you, uh, you have to also write that we have to check the scrubber uh, temperature of the scrubber then after the scrubber 
the gas is going to the deck seal in between there will be blower tank and all so deck seal again uh, it contains a lot of hydrocarbon vapors and it avoids the inert gas to going back into the tank so as we saw already there is uh, water in that and this is the inert gas isolating wall and then pipeline going for each tank it's connected in the tank dome you can see and each tank has a separate pv wall and pv breaker is connected to the same line as the uh, inert gas line so now we will see uh, so same for like deck seal also will have this and this is the mass riser it is the final uh, venting system of the inert gas it is also in the main line and in the deck seal also you have the what you call alarms for water level and power supply so each tank connection has a separate wall and this is pv for rel relieving the pressure and in case of vacuum it will get and also the tanks have got electronic sensor and breather wall in case the line has got low pressure and tank has got sensors of pressure which you can see the pressure in the ship surface or this here Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes. Abhi, abhi sir, jo branch line hoti hai na IG ka, but wo sir tank dome mein connect nahi hota. Wo separate alag se tank. Tank dome mein aisa kuch pipe bhi connect nahi hota hai, sir. Hmm. Separate branch. pipeline going into the tank from the deck. Yes, sir. Hmm. So there are different systems. Uh, somewhere you can have like this somewhere you can have like this. it's one of the same thing tank dome is also part of your uh, tank only uh, 